Oh. Am I on? Okay, great. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, as you all know, uh, Pastor Sheila is away, and this morning we have Dr. Cole filling in for her, so it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Cole, and uh, we will start our service this morning. The call to worship and invocation of prayer, Psalm 100, 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come to his presence with singing. Know that, know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his, and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, steadfast. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And our first hymn this morning is hymn 247, A Day of Resurrection. Now, prayers of the people, I must admit that I missed that out. So if anybody would like to come up and give uh, prayers to the people this morning, or uh, that would be fine. Or I, I just had an alternative thought coming up here this morning. There has been so much going on this week in this world. Maybe we could all take a, a moment of prayer for ourselves and go over that, and then we will do the Lord's Prayer if that may be, okay? Now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. And our scripture this morning is Psalm 23 and be read by Deacon Christina Fitch. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Pardon me. There. I'm sorry. Yes, Julian is singing this morning, and <laughs> I'll step back here again, read my instructions. All right. And he will sing the Lord's Prayer. Christina. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Now, the reading uh, from the 23rd Psalm, the Divine Shepherd, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn 433, We're Across the Crowded Ways of Life. What a joy it is to be back with you again. <clears throat> it's almost a year and a half since I had the privilege of being here in the pulpit and to share the Word of God. I'm originally from Europe and I have a very strong accent, <laughs> which gives me the advantage that you have to listen very carefully. The people who come from Ghana and from England, they speak perfect English. But someone who, like myself, you really have to listen, it will be exciting. Very happy to be here and I'd like to say thank you that your church is also supporting my involvement in mission, in global mission. I'm involved in four major projects. And I thought next Sunday, on Communion Sunday, I will share a little bit about the ministry I'm involved in all over the world. I'm with you for the next three Sundays, God willing. And then the fourth Sunday from now, I'm, I'm in one of the largest churches in the world. They have over 500,000 church members. 
they have 15 services every day. And there are about 25,000 seats in the church. And they're all packed. And they're full. Especially with a younger generation. I'm not saying that you are old. <laughs> I'm saying that you are getting older. <laughs> I was so happy to hear a young voice singing. And I'm so yes. happy to see a young person sitting there. Hi, wave to us. Hey, we give you a big clap. Yes. <laughs> to see a young boy sitting in church. I remember when I was 12, 13, I went to church every Sunday. There were not too many young people. But when I was 16 and 17, we had about over 100 young people coming to church and young couples coming to church. We have many, many empty seats here. Let's help to fill them. It's up to us to invite our children and grandchildren and people around us. But today we talk about Psalm 23. Research has indicated that of all the texts in the Bible, Psalm 23 is the most well-known text around the world. And I'm sure you have probably remember Psalm 23 when it was spoken about in Sunday school. Maybe you rem memorized Psalm 23. I'm sure you will hear it quite often at funerals. But I think we make a mistake. Psalm 23 is not for death. It's not for funerals. Psalm 23 is for life. It's exciting. And I'd like to share with you this morning how exciting Psalm 23 is for us today. There are four parts. It shows first that God is a provider. Secondly, that God is a director, a guide, a teacher. Thirdly, God is a protector. He protects us. And finally, God is a savior. And I will spend a few moments on each of these four points. But before we start at the beginning, let me start at the end for a moment, where it says, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long, which means I want to be with the Lord my whole life. I want to be dedicated to the Lord. I want to be with the Lord. I want to be in his family. And we only understand the psalm if we understand that phrase, I want to be with the Lord all my life. Otherwise, we cannot understand Psalm 23. I want to be with the Lord. And we will talk about that in more details. Number part one, God is a provider. Beautiful promises. He leads me to the right place. He gives me rest and peace. He gives me food. He restores my soul. God is providing all of that But we have to remember that all the promises in the Bible have a condition. There's no promise in the Bible without a condition related to the promise. And so the scripture tells us, my friend, there is rest, there is peace, there is food, there is water, there is everything that you need for life. If you make the Lord the shepherd. 
If you don't recognize the Lord as the shepherd, it's all man-made. It's all our own. If he is not a Lord, all of that is man-made without blessings. He has to be the shepherd in our lives. We have to recognize him as our shepherd. Usually we want to be our own boss. We want to direct, have our own life. We make the decision. We want to do it our way. Sometimes God speaks to us through a sermon, through a reading, through something that you see, through a contact, through a relationship. Through our conscience, God speaks to us, but we want to have it our way. You remember the story of Jonah. The story of Jonah is not about a fish. The story of Jonah is that God spoke to him to do something and he did just the opposite. God said to Jonah, go to the city of Nineveh in the east. And Jonah said to himself, I like to go on a Mediterranean cruise on a sunset to the west, and it just went in the opposite direction. A kind of a split personality. God speaks to us, but we want to do what we want to do. God gives us directions, and we listen to it, and yes, that's nice, nice sermon, good text, beautiful Bible passage, beautiful music. It's wonderful. But don't tell me how I should live. Don't tell me what to do and what not to do. Don't tell me about the religious stuff. That's nice out there. It's in the church on Sunday morning. But during the week, I want to be on my own. The Lord is my shepherd. Is he really your shepherd? If he is your shepherd, he will provide the beautiful rest and peace he promised. He will lead you to the right places, the right relationships. He is blessing you abundantly. If he is a shepherd and we are his sheep, I remember in my life, I do something wrong. I hurt someone. I said something or did something that was not correct. How difficult is it to go and to apologize? My conscience tells me, the inner voice tells me, just apologize, ask for forgiveness. No, we don't do that. We argue and argue and argue. Is the Lord really our shepherd? Then we don't have any want. He has all the blessings in store for us. There's a song. I'm sure you, you remember that song. It has that chorus, It is well with my soul. Can I ask Mr. Organist, can we sing a song, It is well with, with my soul? It's in, in 519. And we can take out the hymn books if you have hymn books close by. It's a beautiful song. I, 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 we are a family here, so we, we don't have to follow the ritual. <laughs> one of the, the deacons already made a couple mistakes, so, so I <laughs> be among ourselves. <laughs> 519. And please emphasize that chorus. Beautiful song. And you can remain seated.
Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> that is a summary of point one of Psalm 23. He restoreth my soul. I hope it is well with your soul. <coughs> the second part, the Lord is directing, he is leading, he is teaching us. It says, he leads me in the right path, the right path. Path. And right comes from righteousness. In the Bible, there are few people described as righteous people. You remember I spoke two years ago, right from the pulpit here, about Joseph, and the father of the earthly father of Jesus. When it doesn't say much in the Bible about him, except there's a phrase, he was a righteous man. What a statement. He was a right man. He did the right things. Are we a righteous person? He wants to lead us to be a, a righteous person to do the right things. Right is the opposite from wrong. We all know that. Are we doing the right things? I have to admit that many times I discover I do the wrong things. And I have to learn to turn around to do the right things, to make it correct. It's the issue of asking Lord, show me what is right. Show me what I should do. Show me what I should say. Show me what kind of approach I 
should have when I meet with that person. Show me in my own family how to be right, to do the right things. You know, as I understand, when I watch a shepherd, he always has a dog along. And sometimes he is using that, that dog. We even have Sherman shepherds, big dogs, to chase the sheep. And sometimes the Lord needs a dog to straighten us out, to bring us back to the right, the right way. Sometimes it's sickness, sometimes sleepless nights, sometimes worries, sometimes whatever the reason. The Lord is using all kind of tools to bring us back on the right way if we want to follow him, if he is our shepherd. That's the key. Next Sunday, God willing, I will speak about the topic of integrity, how to be correct. I'm involved in a, a worldwide network of people promoting integrity. Tough topic. So next Sunday, we will speak about and share with each other something about Psalm 101. So please be prepared during the week. If you have a moment, open your Bible, read Psalm 101. It's so, so simple to remember. 101, 101. Even if your memory is failing, you remember 101. <laughs> And read, read it a couple of times, reflect on it. And then next Sunday we will speak about what is integrity, what is, what is it to be right, and how the Lord can help us to be right. I still have so much to say. <clears throat> the third point, God is a protector. He will lead us in the right direction. He will lead us and he will protect us. But we have to give him a little bit more credit. You know, I, I meet with people and they tell me, oh, I was so sick. I was in the hospital and there were fantastic doctors or maybe not so good doctors. There were nurses and I had good medicine. I had that and that and that. And no one even giving, giving it a thought to say, well, the Lord has healed me. The Lord has helped me. Oh, I almost had an accident this morning. But man, I have a good Toyota car. I have good brakes. It was the Lord who protected you. The Lord is with us. I made a good investment. I made a good choice. I, I, I did the right things because the Lord has given you wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. We have to learn to be more thankful towards the Lord. You remember there's a story in the New Testament where 10 leopards came to Jesus and he healed all of them, but only one came back to say thank you. He was a Samaritan. My friend, we have to learn to be more thankful to God. Give honor and glory to God, not just on Sunday morning when we sing these beautiful songs. Glory to God. And we have to learn to say to ourselves, thank you, Lord, that you helped me today. Thank you that you gave me the right ideas. Thank you that you gave me the opportunity to set things straight. We have to give the Lord more credit. And then there is a time when we even have to go through dark valleys. And there's some very difficult times in our lives. Not necessarily death, but it's part of it. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. 
My friend, there's a, a fantastic statement. Christians are never, never alone. In Matthew 28, you remember the Great Commission. The last two verses in the Gospel of Matthew, where the Lord says, I am with you all the time till the end of the... T always. He's always with us. We are never, never alone. Psalm 23 is reflected in that statement that the Lord is with us and through his Holy Spirit he is present. We have to learn to see him more around us, to give him more credit, give him more thanks. And the last part of that beautiful psalm, God is a Savior. What a beautiful ending of that, that prayer. It must be 50 years ago, I was in the South Pacific, in the island of Palau. I was asked to be the speaker at a big convention and there were mainly younger people probably three, four hundred. They asked me specifically to speak in Psalm 23. And when I came to that phrase, he anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Never before, suddenly in the, in the last row, someone began to sing, my cup overflows. And the whole congregation sang that, Beautiful, beautiful song about the oil, grace and love and joy and peace overflowing in our lives. And they sang and sang in different parts and it was a tremendous choir. I didn't know that they had a song like that. When the church service was over, I said, I must record your singing. That was absolutely beautiful. They couldn't do it again. It was not prepared. Through the Holy Spirit, they just were moved to sing in beautiful voices, my cup overflows. The Lord is willing to anoint us with his oil. And oil in the Old Testament, everyone understood that oil is grace. Oil is, stands for love and peace and joy and forgiveness. Oil is the beautiful thing for healing. The Lord has oil for us. You remember the story of the Good Samaritan? He had with him oil that he poured in the man's wounds, and they were not just physical wounds, they are spiritual wounds. The Lord has oil to help us, to give us that inner peace, to give us freedom. My cup overflows. At one time, someone gave me an illustration about a cup overflows, and I brought with me a simple glass from, from at home. You know, when a cup is at an angle, God can pour into that cup into our lives as much as it wants. It only runs out on one side. It only is half full. But if our glass, or our cup, our lives is completely turned towards God, he can fill it completely and it overflows in every direction, not just on one side. If you want to have a life that is overflowing in every direction, when God can see the blessings that he has for you, we must turn completely to him, recognizing that he is the shepherd in everything in our lives. Maybe you can keep that illustration with you and take it, reflect on it. Is my life really filled with the Lord? 
Am I completely in the presence of the Lord? Is he able to fill my life with that oil that he promised? And then we can say, I will be in his presence forever and ever. I will join him, not in heaven, down here on earth. Psalm 23 is a psalm for life, not for death and afterwards. We cannot describe what we will experience in heaven. Down here we know what we can experience. We can read from Psalm 23 what the Lord has in store for us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You will pair as the table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for my whole life long. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we have such a beautiful reminder how life should be. And we challenged by your spirit today to recognize you as our shepherd, as our Lord, as our master, as the one we want to be with all the time. We want to rededicate our lives to you. Oh, bless us. Anoint us with that oil. Restore our soul. We want to learn to be thankful, to be committed. Even today, we want to say, Lord, be my shepherd. Amen. Now we have another hymn, beautiful hymn, 547, O for closer walk with God.
Yes, I'm just catching up on my schedule here. Thank you. Yes, the offertory prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this house that you have built for us. We give thanks to all that have provided offerings so we can maintain this house. And we pray that you will guide and watch over us all this week. Pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, okay. It's okay. Okay. We have birthdays this week. Uh, well, birthday is Michael Hiltz. Um, uh, the rough copy of the AGM reports are due today. Uh, the final copy are due on the 1st, uh, and there's uh, all committee budgets are due to Tina Levy on the 31st of this month. Okay, um, there is a Valentine luncheon on February 12th. The menu will consist of baked potatoes soup, ham sandwiches, trifle for dessert, and tea and coffee. We hope you can join us following our service. I got a typo in here. The CE committee is really the February 19th. Uh, just friends, we're having an ice cream and cookies so social. I don't have the time here. I think it's seven or 7.30, is it Whit? Yes, seven. Seven. Seven? Yes. Okay, I'll make sure I have it in there for next week. Uh, and the AGM meeting is on the, on the 27th of the, uh, February. Um, okay, um, we are now, um, we have, uh, finally have a group coming in on Monday nights. Uh, it's the South Shore Association for Pipes and Drums. So they're now um, contributing to our church uh, and all other have to come through me and if it's something greater than I can deal with, I put it to the trustees. Um, but that's a, a, an event that's going, uh, that's doing, and they can uh, um, do meetings from home on the nights that we need the church for a meeting or something. Okay, and what else was I gonna say? Oh, um, yeah, they come through me and to go to the trustees. I have spare keys for emergency use if someone needs to get into the church to use for some reason or another, their power goes out. I know we're on the list for the, um, what's that called? Oh, comfort, comfort Center. Center. Comfort Center, so we, we are still on that. So and with, with the doing the generator, I don't know, has that been done? It's in the works here now. Okay, it's in the works, good. The generator is in the works. Yes. So that the Comfort Center, um, will work in the end. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, oh yeah, uh, communions next week. And, and they also, uh, there will be offering plates for the Benevolent Fund to assist people in our community that are need, in need. And we also have extra offering envelopes in the, in, in the for entrance. And if you do have a numbered envelope and you don't want to use it and you want to donate it back to the church for the church use, we, they can always cross off the number and reuse it as, for their use so they can get a receipt. Um, is there anything else I we can think of? No? Oh, it's, all, it's all yours. All right. Yeah, it's just a real quick update on the, on the generator. Um, it's in the process of uh, we've been uh, given the grant. It's just a matter of logistics and getting everything into place. So we're hoping within the next little while that uh, everything will be up and running. Okay. And now, Deacon's benediction. Thanks, Christina. <laughs> Before we have the benediction, let me say an observation. We just had a prayer for an offering, but we had no offering. It's wonderful. Right I, I just want to remind you, we prayed in advance, <laughs> <laughs> which means you have to you in increase a little bit more, you know, to, to, to keep up. The church needs it. And I was so happy that, did I understand we have today ice cream? No. Oh. 
We don't have ice cream today. No. It's on the 18th. On the 18th. Yes. The but we, on the evening. Yeah, you're welcome to come. But after, <laughs> sun, after Sunday in two weeks, we have a, a, we have a luncheon. That's wonderful. A Valentine. Yes. Oh, an expression of love. What, what a wonderful <laughs> church you have. I, 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 I think I should apply for membership. <laughs> It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. And now let's, let's pray. I chose, it's, it was a longer um, benediction than I normally would choose. And then I was going, oh, well, the congregation's not going to be impressed. They're going to go, oh, it's too long, Christina. So then I did pray. And then I said, God spoke to me and said, no, stay with it. So here we go. From Ephesians, chapter 3, 16 to 21. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful prayer. Thank you. Let me pronounce benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling, to make you stand without blemish in the presence and the glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority from now till forevermore. Amen. Amen.